start with a very interesting topic to deal with that is analytical chemistry. What do you mean by analytical chemistry? It is a branch of chemistry which deals with the experimental study both qualitative and quantitative means that is to go in the lab perform the experiment and you come to know the observation of it. Previously in your lower standard you must have learned about the chemicals and the precipitate but you must not be aware of the chemicals ka color or even the color of the precipitate. So in this topic we are going to deal with that. Not only that it is going to be helpful for you in your day to day life also like when you cook food you add some chemicals in it to get the spicy food the taste to the food this all can be obtained through analytical chemistry. Salts are generally colored if the cation or the anions both are colored or any one of them is colored. Salts of generally 1A to 7A are generally colorless along with 2B group elements. Whereas salts of group 1B to 7B and 8 which are generally transition elements they form colored cations. Copper, chromium, manganese, ferrous, ferric, cobalt, nickel they generally form colored cations whereas sodium, potassium, magnesium, aluminium, barium and calcium they form colorless cations. In case of anions dichromate and permanganate they form colored anion whereas sulfate, carbonate and nitrate they form colorless anion. Now let us consider certain salt solution and let us see what is the effects of sodium hydroxide on this salt solutions. Say for example let us take the first one magnesium chloride treated with sodium hydroxide will give sodium chloride and magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide is a precipitate. A precipitate is indicated by an arrow pointing downwards. This magnesium hydroxide it will form a dull white precipitate which is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Now let us balance these equations. What do you mean by balancing? The number of atoms on the reactant and the number of atoms on the product should be equal. So let us consider this example what we had already cited. MgCl2 there is one Mg on the reactant side and there is one Mg on the product side. So the number of atoms of magnesium is balanced on the reactant as well as on the product side. Now let us consider chlorine on the reactant side chlorine is 2 whereas on the product side in NaCl there is only one chlorine. In order to balance this chlorine we put number 2 in front of NaCl. Now sodium became 2 on the product side. In order to balance that sodium we put 2 in front of NaOH. Now if you look at it the entire equation it is a balanced equation with all the number of atoms on the reactant will be equal to the number of atoms on the product. Similar manner let us take one more example ferrous sulfate FeSO4 treated with excess of NaOH. In the beginning you will get sodium sulfate Na2SO4 along with that you get FeOH twice that is ferrous hydroxide a precipitate which is light green in color. 
or you can say a lightish type of color is obtained. This precipitate again it is indicated by an arrow downwards. This precipitate is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Again we can balance the equation similar to what we had balanced it in the previous case putting 2 only in front of NaOH the reaction will be balanced. Now let us consider one more example third example that is of ferric chloride FeCl3 FeCl3 when treated with sodium hydroxide you will get NaCl and ferric hydroxide that is FeOH thrice again a precipitate indicated by an arrow downwards this precipitate is reddish brown in color again insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide you can balance the equation in the similar manner what we had balanced in the first case by putting 3 in front of NaOH and 3 in front of NaCl the equation will be balanced now let us consider one more salt which will be soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide that is we take zinc sulfate zinc sulfate that is ZnSO4 treated with excess of sodium hydroxide will form sodium sulfate Na2SO4 along with that we get a precipitate of zinc hydroxide which is a gelatinous white precipitate soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide again you can balance this equation by putting 2 in front of NaOH but as I told you this precipitate of zinc hydroxide is soluble in excess of NaOH then what it will form? it forms sodium zincate along with water sodium zincate Na2 ZnO2 it becomes a colorless solution when treated with excess of sodium hydroxide similar manner we can take one more soluble salt and that is lead nitrate PbNO3 twice treated with NaOH excess of it will give us NaNO3 plus PbOH twice again a precipitate indicated by arrow downwards which will give you a chalky white precipitate now this precipitate if you take it and treat it with excess of NaOH it will give you sodium plumbite that is Na2 PbO2 along with water again it is soluble in excess of NaOH giving a colorless solution